equals stress. So that's why we've got uh, those flowery terms sometimes, but really it's just stress. It's a headache. We're going to talk about it moving in five steps. And again, strategy versus logistics. Think big picture, where do I want to go, as well as how do I get there? I'm going to try to hit on both. And uh, you're going to need to do the same to have, this, to have levels of success. So this is a slide from my Freedom workshop uh, so you might look familiar but it's the challenge elimination slide and these are the five steps that we're going to talk about we're going to go into each one in detail of what we want to look at why they're important and what uh, what are we doing currently that might help us reduce some stress and what are we overlooking or what are we not valuing enough and in that you know kind of looking at that I've got the steps for step one and step four highlighted because unfortunately that's what most people do they have a situation that this stinks this is causing me a headache this is stressful what can i do to eliminate it right now so they just jump to four sometimes it works sometimes it causes bigger headaches we may not even realize it for a day a week a year down the line or it may not even solve the actual problem stressor that we have. It might just be uh, addressing a symptom, and we'll talk about why that's important. So there are five steps here. So unfortunately, most common in business and personally, we've got a problem. Hey, I've got a problem. How can I fix it? That's important, and sometimes it'll work, but we need to have these five considerations. And you're not going to need to spend a set amount of time on each because this specific situation will dictate uh, what each step uh, should be should look like but if you have this framework it'll help you reduce that stress in pretty much any setting uh, where you are encountering problems or challenges so we start with the situation and I'll, I'll jump into the next slide here and then we'll kind of talk about it so the situation is understanding what is my headache and why is that important because in an example I'll give I'll show why uh, solving the wrong headache is going to just cause you additional ones but how do we do that? We ask questions, just like we learn when we were kids. Who, what, where, when, how? What is the actual current situation, the current headache that's causing me a problem? Is this happening now? Has this happened in the past and I'm just speculating? Or is this possibly going to happen in the future? Ideally, I mean, not for us in the moment, we want to solve the problems, the stressors that we have right now, that they're actually happening. Now, we can ask those questions. So we know who is happening when these people are in the room. What's happening? This is the situation. Or uh, how is it occurring? Well, it, these are the factors that lead into so answering those questions, the who, what, when, where, and how. It doesn't always have to be all of them, but that's where we want to start. And then how can we define this current situation to somebody who might not be living it? How can we objectively uh, describe it to somebody who's not on our team, not in our house, not in our, not in our company? Let's say, oh, that's, that's, that's a problem. That's, that's a headache. That's really stressful. So you've got an idea of, okay, this is, this is causing me real problems. This is keeping me, this challenge is keeping me from where I want to go. What do I do now? And this is where a lot of us go wrong. We will jump right to the solution. But we need to understand the reason for what's happening. Because if we don't understand the reason, we can solve the wrong problem. We might be solving a symptom of the problem. So I'll go into an example here. Uh, some people know it. it. It's kind of famous in the uh, lean continuous improvement circles. But it really helps illustrate this point. So back in the 80s or so, the uh, Lincoln Memorial in D.C. was having an issue that the uh, marble at the uh, memorial needed to be replaced more frequently than uh, marble should be. Marble is a very expensive stone, so you don't have to replace it too often. So the folks in charge of maintaining the memorial saw that the marble cost was really exceeding what it should have been. Uh, so they just replaced it a couple times because they said, okay, we obviously have low quality. We're spending more and more on replacing the marble and not actually uh, getting a better result. They couldn't figure out why. So in looking for the reason, uh, they found out, well, uh, it's actually the, the harsh cleaning solution that we use that eats through the marble. That's why I have to replace it. Okay, can we just change the cleaning solution then? Well, actually no, because uh, the cleaning solution we use is very specific because we have a lot of bird droppings. Apologize for the uh, visual there, but it helps our story. Uh, we need to clean it with this. This is the only cleaner that works. So although it is harsh and abrasive on the stone, uh, we need to use it because the bird drop. Okay, are, are these birds uh, only... Uh, is this a Maryland, D.C. issue? Is this specific to where we are? No, not really. They're actually all over. Okay, uh, so then why do we need to use it here on this marble and not uh, in, in other areas? Well, we actually found out that there's a uh, certain insect, a midge, that comes, uh, flies in the area and that uh, the birds like to eat. That's why they're here. Okay, same question. Are the insects here because it's specific to where the monument is, where the memorial is? Nope, uh, they're all over as well. Okay, oh, actually, in digging down, they found out that the lighting that they had at night, so they could be night viewing, attracted the insects uh, at a high, high level. Birds came to eat the insects. 
dropping, cleaning, so forth. So it wasn't actually a marble issue. The reason for their problem was the types of lighting they used. So they actually switched out the light bulb, switched when they put the lights on and off, and boom, the marble was fine. So instead of just having that high cost of replacing the marble, they found out that it was actually a lighting issue, much lower cost, but they need to drill down and figure out that reason. So what's wrong? What is the actual situation? In that example, it's, it's that there was lighting that was bringing in insects, insects bringing the birds, and so forth. And they found out by asking why multiple times. And much like a child, why, why, why do, can you do this? Why? Can you go do that? Why? You ask why not once, twice, three times, ten times, as many times as the situation dictates. So in my other workshop, I'll tell a story of an open house where I did not properly fix a leaky pipe. And if I had simply asked why a couple times, I would have drilled down and understood the reason for my wet floor that it was a pipe and not just water on the floor. And you want to be sure that you want to solve for the right problem. So using that example, do you want to solve the leaky pipe or just get wipe the water off the floor? Because the pipes can keep leaking. So you want to make sure that you know the reason for what's wrong. And it's as simple as drilling down, understanding the why or the root cause of your headache or your stress. So situation, what's going on? The reason why is this happening? Then we want to define a target, where we want to be. And that's the where to, where we're going. This is where I'll tell my last example, my last story. I had a client a couple years back. I won't use names uh, to keep that client and their client uh, uh, confidential. But they were working with a seller who wanted to list their home, I believe, in the high eights, eight seventy nine or eight ninety nine. And my client thought that the house should be priced somewhere in the sevens. Uh, they couldn't come to an agreement. They said, well, all right, we'll put it on the market for high eights. And uh, it was very important. So, so they did. And then long story short, the house didn't sell. And the reason that the house didn't sell was overpriced. So sellers frustrated because the house had been in the market longer. It was just a couple years ago. So houses stayed in the market longer than they should have. The agent was frustrated because he was doing all he can to bring traffic, to bring possible buyers. But same thing, house is too expensive, house is too expensive, house is too expensive. Um, and when they actually sat down, I think 60 days afterward, to inspect what was going on, the reason that the house was set at the price was not because it was what the owners valued it at, it was what their walkaway number needed to be. And the reason, without getting into many details, was that that's what they needed for their expenses in their next home and their, they were leaving town and so forth. And what they needed, what they thought they needed for their lifestyle going forward. So long story short, the, my client, the agent, brought in the financial advisor of the sellers and they discovered, hey, we can also just cut expenses uh, that you have in your day to day. I think they actually were leasing a uh, high-end vehicle that they uh, either just traded in or they just got rid of altogether because they didn't need it for where they were going. So well, we can now price the house where it belongs, where the market tells us its value is, and your walkaway number no longer needs to be as high as it is because it was impacted by some of those unrelated to the sale of the house. So long story short, their target was way off because they had the wrong set of facts. So what you want to do when you have a stressful situation, when you have a headache, understand why it's happening, and then clearly define where you want to go, where your target, where your solution should get you. Uh, the easiest way to do that, I'm not a big fan of acronyms or cute things like SMART, but as far as goal setting, this one's a helpful place to start. Specific, measurable, attainable, relevant, and time-bound. So you don't need all those things, but think about it when you're setting where you want to go. How can I define it? Again, how can I explain to somebody who's not in my situation? Somebody who's not unaware of all the headaches that are going on. And then think of your target and your current situation. What's the gap between? What do I need to, uh, what do, I need to do to get from A to B? point A to point B. Where, where, how do I get there? What does that distance look like? And then the greater the distance, how much effort, what kind of resources and so forth is going to be needed to get from A to B. So that's when you're going to work on your solution. And for any of you, again, who have uh, attended my prior workshops, these steps here in step four and five, the solution aftermath, are really my strategy framework. So the first thing you want to do is prepare. You want to get the right stuff. What I mean by that is have the right people working on a plan the right uh, resources, the right location, so forth. Uh, the way to think about it at home is if, actually even work is a better example. If you've got managers and chief executives working on a problem that they're looking to solve, uh, but the problem is happening on the, uh, in the warehouse where they never even step foot, they have no idea what it's like in that room. They have no idea what it's like to be the people there. They are only hearing second and third hand. So you need people actually uh, encountering the stress or encountering the headache, encountering the problem, to work on the plan to 
uh, solve it. And when you're planning, what you want to do is you want to create multiple options, compare benefits, cost analysis, which would be better, and evaluate them. Say, all right, here's our three possible plans forward. This one seems the most likely because I'm using uh, different ways to evaluate them. And this is how we want to solve our headache. And you don't need a lot of time in each of these, but you want to be cognizant that I have the right people who are decision makers. Here's my right plan. And I'm going to start performing. And performing just means I'm going to put my plan into place. What I need to do to execute. So step five is the aftermath. What happens after I start performing? And the last example I'll give here is our stress or headache. This one's a home example. For anybody with small children, you know that uh, sometimes parenting can be difficult. And if you want your child to listen to you, stop throwing a fit, you might have a plan in place where, you know, I'm going to be stern this time. We're going to say, if this ha- if you don't stop crying, you're going to go right to your room. And all of a sudden, they might throw even bigger fit. It's like, okay, well, that backfired. So maybe instead of being stern, I need to put in a, a different message. So I go back, back to my plan. What am I going to do? What am I going to, do? What am I going to say? How am I deliver it? I'm going to perform again. So once we start putting that solution in place, what unintended consequences, what other things did we not foresee start coming into place? So this is our second part of performance. How can we put something into place that solves both that original headache, the problem we were looking to get rid of, and then doesn't cause us additional headaches or worse problems. Make sure that it's actually helping the situation that we want to and not one of those symptoms. And that's where this review and remodel come in. Very overlooked uh, very often done because we think, all right, solution, great. What, nothing else to nothing else to do. But that's not always the case. We need to review and see: is there any unintended consequences that are creeping in that we didn't ca- account for, that we should um, have either accounted for in the planning part, or that we need to go back and do something a little different. And same with remodel and repeat. If we're doing something different, let's remodel that plan perform and execute in a way that addresses those things. So these five steps, well, they're one, two, three, four, five. Think of them more of as a cycle. As you may bounce from one through five multiple times, but you want to get to a target or result that, that actually eliminates what you wanted to eliminate and brings you to an ideal, if not ideal situation, a better uh, a place than you were when you began. And it's going to be different timing, different levels of effort to get there, but this is the framework that will help you get there. These are our five steps, again, in summary, uh, just showing that it's not just a situation or a stressful problem and then a solution, that there are three other steps that we need to implement in order to have a likely positive outcome. So what's next? Uh, Check out the uh, QR code link here. There's a bunch of the resources that we talked about, a bunch of other things that help uh, in fortifying this five-step process as well as the strategy template in uh, making things more smoothly because regardless of how much we prepare and plan we are always going to have stressful situations and things are going to pop up that we could not have forecasted they're not predictable so we're going to need the ways to eliminate them when they come up and this framework helps a lot of the time think you know 80 percent that these five steps will help eight times out of ten uh let me see if there's any question all right we do have one question here uh this is from amy amy is asking well uh how do i get this at work when my my boss is not interested in what I have to ask. So um, um, <laughs> what I have to ask, what, what my problems are. So a kind of easy, well, not even easy, a way to think about this is that to show that why would it be valuable for someone you work with to implement something like this? If, if they're solving the problems that uh, are occurring for you, for your team, and they have no, no idea, um, how can you demonstrate to them that A, that your input is valuable, uh, B, why why are they trying to do that? You know, Going back to the, the, the root cause, is it something that they've had success in the past? Is it that they've never considered that uh, this is happening uh, to you and your colleagues? Or is it uh, something they just <laughs> unfortunately may not value um, what um, that their teammates, their colleagues are telling them. So do you need to, uh, if you can't demonstrate, it's something that you and your team can uh, work on solutions and then bring it to upper management if that's the case and say, hey, this was a problem for us. This is how we solved it. And our, these were the resources we had available. Here's how we could solve it. If we work together, there's other solutions in place. Just showing that you've thought about these things, uh, that you've got a, a way to move it forward in, in a collaborative manner. 
So that uh, will take us to the end of uh, today's session. Thank you everyone for joining us live. Thank you for watching this uh, live recording later. If you uh, have any questions for me directly, feel free to reach out and uh, I appreciate it. Have a uh, great day, everyone.